Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up there, guys. Wake up. Stuart, I miss you, buddy. I don't know if the message that I gave to Micah Parsons hit him, but I tell you what, the way he's been playing so far this season, he's doing everything in his power to get you that Super Bowl win. What a night, what a night, what a night. What a way to change things around. You know, what a difference a week literally makes in the NFL because um, I, I'm just happy that, it, you know, I don't know how the rest of the season is going to work out. I honestly don't. But I'm glad that we don't have to have the bitch fest for the next week, that we at least can look at it and say, wow. And quite frankly, forget about Tampa Bay. Maybe Tampa Bay's defense is really legit and part of the problem we had last week. When we looked at the schedule, what did everybody say? The Dallas Cowboys' toughest part of their schedule is the first half of the season. It gets better as the season goes on. And when we looked at it and said, we're playing Tampa Bay, and we're just playing, you know, the Super Bowl runner-ups in Cincinnati. Most people gave us an 0-2 mark to start the season. The Eagles, we worried about saying the Eagles, they're going to run away with the division, you know, if the Cowboys don't at least kind of hold surf. We're actually in a better position than most people forecasted the beginning of the season. Let's be clear here. Micah Parsons and that defense – and that defense played as a team last night. It wasn't just Micah. It was mostly Micah, but it went as Micah did. But there's so many guys that played so well. It's from Anthony Barr playing David Denz and uh, Leighton Van Der Esch. Both of those guys bringing back Leighton Van Der Esch looks like it was a great move, along with Anthony Barr signing because having Anthony Barr enabled you to put Micah Parsons where he's going to get the big money. You can make good money as a middle linebacker, but as an edge rusher, whoo boy. I remember talking to his dad and saying, ultimately, the best thing is having Micah Parsons there on the line. And people said, no, nah, he's too small for that, man. You're wasting his talent. Listen, I don't want him in coverage. It's okay to put him out there at middle linebacker from time to time, but you can see the damage that he did even when he did not get the sack, he forced Burrow off the block. It was a thing of beauty. It was a thing of beauty. And for the Cowboys, this is the new formula for winning. Whether you like it or hate it, it's not going to be where we're getting 40 points a night. Even when Dak comes back. I know some of you are out there to say, screw Dak, don't bring him back and all that. Um, okay, all right. Well, I tell you what. If Cooper Rush can elevate his game where he's playing better than Dak, by all means, Cooper Rush needs to be the guy. But this is the NFL today, a week-to-week -week league where you can be great one week and you can be asked the next. Now, the good thing for the Cowboys is, well, Washington lost. Boom, chakalaka. The Giants won, and we play them next week. The Giants are 2-0. We got the Eagles tonight against the Minnesota Vikings, who looked great last week against Green Bay. Green Bay looked great last night against the Bears. So we don't know if Green Bay just does what Green Bay always does and plays terrible the first game, or if Minnesota is actually legit. We don't know. Um, but I do know this much. I'm a man of my word. No matter how much it hurts, I said that if the Cowboys win, I'd eat the chip. And I need to go out of town tomorrow, too, so this is not going to be fun. But i got to eat the chip tonight during the Eagles live stream. We're going to be, of course, watching and seeing what Philly 500 does, and I will be eating the chip. So tune in tonight for that. Now, when I did my fireside chat game balls last night, 
I screwed up. I forgot one person very important to the win last night. And that was Money Maher, who since his second stint with the Cowboys has come back. And that's the thing about kickers. Kickers sometimes get to be streaky. Um, they get in slumps for no rhyme or reason. Then they get out of slumps, and then they're good for a while. Right now, Maher, he was butter last night. He ended up hitting that field goal, the game winner, that walk-off field goal. Thank God. Game ball to you as well. Um, I also want to say, too, that they called a different game plan. Still didn't run as much as I would have liked, but they did get over that 100-yard threshold, which is key for the Cowboys. They used some 12 personnel. They ended up uh, doing very quick, quick passes. They ended up using quick screens and things that were not enabling the defense to get to Cooper Rush. Um, and once those things started working, then they were able to actually open up the field and go down some more. A much better play called game. Um, I did notice that Mike McCarthy had the card. He was talking on the headset. I don't know if this was play calling by committee or if he was actually saying run this one, you know, overruling Kellen Moore. But the first half of that game when the offense was really chicken up, picking up yards and doing things, it felt like it was a different game plan. And shout out to the Cowboys for doing that. Hopefully when Dak comes back, we'll do these things to help out our offense. And I'll also say that our offensive line played a lot better last night as well. Um, and some of the problems the offensive line might have been that Tampa Bay was just that good. But let's go to the man of the hour and listen to him last night after the heat of battle. Michael, what a game. First off, I'm sure you're exhausted after that one and that long drive from Cincinnati there. But what can you say about your defense? Let's start there. Two sacks by you, shredding the double teams. Seven sacks total. What was the key to getting it done against the Bengals there? I mean, we had to get be relentless today. I mean, knowing Dags down, all the injuries, we really had to step as a defense. We're owning it, owning in on this year. Defense mentality. We got to be relentless, hard work, and a bunch of bad mother. You know what I'm saying? They had a so bunch that's, of that's bad mother. Glad you caught yourself there. No Dak, you mentioned it. What about the job that Cooper Rush was able to do coming in here? Say hello. You're good. Oh, man, Cooper Rush did a great job. I believe in Coop. Like I said last year, he stepped in big for us last year against Minnesota, and he did it again. It just goes to his preparation, next man mentality, and everything that he stands for, man. I'm super happy for him. What do you say to Cowboy Nation, who after starting 0-1, losing Dak, was like, I don't know what's going to happen with the Cowboys. What do you have to say to them? I said, if you don't believe in us, we're going to fight. That's all I believe in. We're going to fight back against the wall. Nobody believes in us, but we're going to believe in each other in this locker room. Don't give up on us yet. We got the rest of the season, baby. Great job today. Thanks. Thank all right. So all those out there that were saying the season is over, I'm done. It's not over. But I'm still not going to give a pass to the Joneses just yet. Just not going to do that. Um, you know, Jerry did say that Cooper Rush, you know, he, he knows all the plays. He, he knows all the throws. Okay. Well, okay. You know, even a, a, um, a, a, a broke clock is right twice a day. Um, we still have some issues that we have to worry about, but a win is a win in today's NFL. We're back to 500. We are back to at least having hope. We have the New York Giants, of course, next week, and that's going to be, of course, a big, big game in New York. Micah Parsons did tweak his ankle a little bit last night, but said, you know, at this time of the year that you're always in pain and you have to play through pain. So let's hope that he is, in fact, okay as far as that goes. Now, I'm curious. See, this, this is where I was waiting to see if we're going to get the walk of shame today because we had, you know, um, everybody writing the Cowboys off, the Cowboys that don't have a chance and everything else. And going to that game, I said how the Cowboys get a win is the defense. The defense has got to put pressure on Joe Barrow, get some takeaways. I said, we got to run the football. We got to do 12 personnel. We got to do quick hit and passes. And it seems like that's what the Cowboys ended up doing. As long as you have a defense that can play like this and make no mistake about it, 
They held Tom Brady to 19. They held Joe Burrow to 17. So right now, this defense is only giving up 18 points against two of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. If that trend continues, when you're going against a Daniel Jones or a Carson Wentz or a Jalen Hurts, and let's be clear, when we play against the Eagles, this defense with the speed that it has definitely will match up well with Jalen Hurts in that running game. But, you know, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're worried about the Giants for now. This defense, shout out to Dan Quinn, is definitely the reason why we have any hope for the season. Not absolved of any type of performance right now, but Micah Parsons and the way that Dan Quinn is yes. using him to not yep. only free him up, but to make sure he's in position to end the game, wreck the game, is one of the most impressive things going on in the NFL this early season. And look, I'm not the kind of person who ever says, I told you so. <laughs> yes, you are. Because you're never right. I'm exactly that person who told you that. I, honestly, I had it. Rex telling me, Marcus Spears telling me, everyone, Cowboys are dead, Cowboys are dead. The Cowboys have life through week two. Green, this is what we know about you. You've been a Jets fan your whole life. Yes. You're nothing if not optimistic, <laughs> right? Because you would have jumped out of the window if you weren't. That's right. And you also want the show to continue and yes. us to be able to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Right. But you were exactly right. Maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is a little better than we thought, and that's mm. why the Dallas Cowboys didn't perform last week. There's no pass rusher in the league that has as many pass rusher wins as Michael Parsons, and it's not his full-time position. When you think about what this team was able to do defensively, it shows the next step in the progression of who Dan Quinn is as the defensive coordinator of this team. And yesterday, they played with passion. They played with heart, and Cooper Rush came out, and I believe he actually gave them a lift. Sometimes when you go to the backup, the rest of the team understands they have to take a step up. We got to block better. We got to rush better. We got to catch the football better. And we saw all of those things from the Dallas Cowboys. This is one of the biggest and best games they played. Yeah, I look at the mm -hmm. I said that you're not going to go out and trade for a backup quarterback. Yeah. You know, like you're not going to mortgage your future for now because, look, if this guy can win half the games and get it to where Dak Prescott is, that's fine. I still think it's over because I'm not that impressed with that team. Well, I, I mean, I'm really that not. Impressive. But that damn, the, the, you know, this Micah Parsons, like, Eagles could joke. lose. E Eagles could easily lose yes. tonight to Minnesota. And then the Cowboys get the Giants on Monday Night Football next week. The Cowboys could be sitting in first place of the division by the time we wake up next Tuesday morning. Now, Dan, having just said that, yeah. let's move to the next quick order of business here. Mm -hmm. Joe Burrow. I mean, the world fell in love he with this kid, and for beaten. all the right reasons last year as he led Cincinnati to the Super Bowl. But if anything, their offensive line looks worse. What happened in Cincinnati? Yeah. 90% of what's happening in Cincinnati is directly tied to their bad offensive line. He's on <laughs> track for 111 sacks. He got 52 last year, folks. And this offensive line is getting him hit faster this year than he did last year. Well, he did play but against two great moments, defenses. Greeny, where you sit there and go, that first clip that I showed, Micah Parsons comes unblocked. That, that, that's our plan. We're going to make sure that everybody else on the Cowboys defense is blocked but Micah Parsons, <laughs> and then we're going to solo block him a ton. So I don't love what they're doing protection schematically wise. But there's also moments that he has been hit so much that when they do actually have good protection, he plays so sped up because he's anticipating the pressure getting to him that you sit there and go, that's not, that's not the same guy right now. He'll get there, but he is very much so – allowing the pressure to dictate how he's playing. He's feeling the rush. He's feeling the rush. Thank you for watching ESPN. And see, that's the thing. What you're going to see now is you're going to see teams that are going to try and counteract. Um, Micah Parsons, it, it's amazing to see the numbers where he's already gotten 15 pressures, far and away more than anybody else this season. And this is with him being double and triple teamed. And what you find is other guys are getting to the quarterback now because you got two or three guys on him. You can't cover everybody. If we can get D-Law, get him. D-Law played good run stopping. But if we can get D-Law to start getting some pressure from the other side, oh, my God. But shout out to the rotation of guys and guys that are unsung heroes. The thing that's actually sad about football, the quarterback – always gets the praise, you know, quarter, oh man, you know, that quarterback, or, or he always gets, you know, of course, all the blame, you know, the wide receiver, the running back and stuff. But see, 
it was the offensive line last night that ended up helping that game because Cooper Rush had time to throw. And unless there's a false start or a holding penalty or just a terrible block, you don't hear those offensive linemen's names called. That's how you know an offensive line is doing good. You don't hear their names called. They're unsung heroes. And the same thing happens on the guys in the interior of the defensive line. Quentin Bohannon, I can see why they ended up, you know, releasing John Ridgeway and hope to sign him back on the practice squad. Because Quentin Bohannon, who was a surprise listed as starter, you can see how he is clogging the middle. Quentin Bohannon is doing what he's supposed to do. He's not getting the numbers because people look and equate a defensive lineman all the same. But Quentin Bohannon, his job is to keep the linebackers clean, take on the double teams, and keep the quarterback from being able to step up. And you could see last night the quarterback, Joe Burrow, could not step up. You could see Leighton Van Der Esch and Anthony Barr unmolested. And that's because of Quentin Bohannon. I have to look at the numbers and see how many tackles and assists he made. But you won't equate those things in numbers. But the impact is huge. The whole defensive front, they did their job. They stopped Joe Mixon. They kept uh, Burrow from stepping up and getting out there. And by doing that, it made the job easier for Micah Parsons and the linebackers. And so this is where you look at this and say, Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn has got these guys disciplined. He's got them flying to the ball. He's got them tackling well. And when I watched, and it wasn't about hate with you Eagle fans. Every time I say something about the Eagles or critique them, and I critique my own team, you take it that, you know, I'm just throwing shade. But what I saw in preseason with the Eagles and what I saw last week was kind of what I saw with the Dallas Cowboys defense in 2020. Because we would see... Bad angles taken on guys. Guys, safeties, you know, having doing a 180, you know, losing track of the ball when your eyes should always be with everything in front of you, seeing where it's just one guy engaging and tackling or guys that are just trying to tackle using the head. You don't see any of those headshots with the Cowboys. You see guys coming in with the shoulders and everything else going across the body. For example, when you saw there was a flag thrown at Leighton Van Der Esch because it looked like it was helmet to helmet, but it ended up being they picked up the flag. He hit him with the shoulder. He hit him perfect technique and bounced his ass right out of there. And this is the difference of coaching. Coaching matters. Coaching matters. Dan Quinn has it. Everybody is flying to the ball. Guys are getting good tackling fundamentals of understanding, get my head across the body, use the shoulder, wrap up, and take them down. They're getting good pursuit angles. They're not giving up the big plays. And understand, you know, people, they're paid on the other side of the ball. They're going to make catches, but it's those catches that end up being a 10-yard play that goes to the house that are backbreakers. And thus far, this team has not been giving those up. And this is praise to Dan Quinn and that whole defense. And so we'll have a lot of great things to talk about today. And tonight, of course, we'll be live streaming the Eagles game. And I will be eating the chip. Whew. You want to, before I get out of here, here's the funny thing. Here's the funny, this is a true story. I said Saturday that if the Cowboys win, I'm going to eat the chip. And while I was out doing my shopping for, you know, game day, you know, we have the big subs and stuff. And, and if you like uh, the foods that I've cooked and things, um, I have another channel, Cooking and Tailgating with Joe Boo, where I'm putting all of my game day recipes and stuff on there. Also here, there's a playlist of about 50 uh, different things that I've done, how I do my pulled pork and things like that and stuff from last year. But I'm slowly getting all that stuff put on the other channel. But while I was out, I got a gallon of milk and a half a gallon of ice cream. Maybe it was foreshadowing that I knew the Cowboys were going to win. I don't know. But I have them. So with that being said, we're going to get ourselves right on out of here. As always, you know how we roll. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.
Yeah!